So we actually have a short chapter here because we're just extending what we've done in the previous chapter now to two-dimensional motion. And what changes is some of the notation that we have. Now remember, in the previous chapter we were just moving in one dimension, usually just in the x-direction. Now we have an additional direction that we're going to add for two-dimensional motion, and we can even add a third direction if we want to do three-dimensional motion. Um, the nomenclature might be a little bit different. Instead of talking about displacement in terms of x, where the positive x direction is to the right, the negative x direction is to the left, our displacement is now represented by the vector r. Okay? And I should say the displacement is uh, represented by delta r where r is actually the position vector. So um, our initial position points from the origin to our initial starting point. Maybe we're following this orange line right here. And we're going to end up over here at this position right here. Now notice I've changed both my x and my y components right here. So when I look at my displacement, okay, it is my position vector now compared to what it was and that will be the difference in the x position, okay, but also the position in the y direction. In terms of extending what we had before in terms of velocity, we're doing pretty much the same thing. Um, we're still using v to represent velocity. However, now since our displacement is r, um, or delta r instead of delta x, this delta r represents a displacement in the x, the y, and even the z direction. So when we're looking at the average velocity, it will be the average component in the x direction. I hat indicates that vx in the x direction, uh, vy, j hat, plus vz, k hat. Now don't get too concerned here because most of the time we just refer to the x component and the y component individually. Okay? We'll treat them separately. I said when we were first introducing these unit vectors that in many cases we ignore this type of notation. It's helpful for higher level mechanics courses, but for our purposes we would want to know how fast it's going in the x direction and then treat the y direction independently from that. In almost all cases we don't even introduce the z direction. So, again, if we'd want to write out the entire velocity vector, then we would write it out perhaps in this form. This is average velocity. The average in the x, the average in the y, the average in the z, where it has both a magnitude, vx, direction, i hat, vy, j hat, vz, k hat, basically using the unit vector notation. When we do projectile motion, the x component of the velocity will be constant. We'll basically treat that separately from the y component. The y component will involve acceleration. So the fact that one direction has no impact on the other direction means that we really don't have to include them together unless we're trying to find the magnitude of the overall velocity. So here's the average velocity, okay? It is the displacement as a function of time, okay, how much has our position changed, x, y, z, or just x and y, how much time has gone by since we first measured and now measure, and then we have instantaneous velocity, which is the rate at which our position vector changes as a function of time. And again, it is the x component of the instantaneous velocity, the y component of the instantaneous velocity, plus the z component of the instantaneous velocity. Again, even for instantaneous velocity, the x and the y components for projectile motion pretty much act independently. So we never have to put them together. We treat the x component separately because normally no acceleration is taking place there, and the y component separately from the x.